Good evening and welcome to Scrapping on the Fly. This is Kristen and I have a few layouts to share this evening. Um, I am still <laughs> in Galaxy's Edge. Um, I have one, two, I have three more Star Wars layouts and then a few more Disney layouts and our trip home and I'll be done. So I don't know what to think about that. I'll have to think about what is next, but first let me finish up what I've got. So here uh, we go. So if you've never been to Galaxy's Edge, they have a milk stand and at the milk stand you can get blue and green milk which is from the movies and I'm not even going to attempt to butcher where the blue milk and the green milk come from so you can go to the milk stand and get them they're like frozen milk it's rice milk I believe or oat milk and my son can't have dairy and he can have it um the blue milk was really good the green milk was eh but um so this is all of my family trying the milk I use this Echo Park um, Family Fun um, Cut Apart. I've been holding on to this for this specific layout because I um, loved this and we did have a lot of fun. And I really loved all these um, droid bits that are in the background. Um, this, this was right around the corner from the milk stand. So to create this layout, I took this bag which is all of my scrappy bits and since the milk that we tried was blue and green I took all of my blue bits now if you've ever scrapbooked Disney before there is very little to no green in most all of the lay of their um, pages it's blue it's red it's yellow there's black white um, that's really the extent I mean this is the majority of the colors that you'll find in Echo Park in photo play in um like multiple um layouts i did find a few shades of green in the ek success um photo or um uh, paper pad but not much variety it was like one shade so i took all of my blue scraps and some of them were big like this some of them were itty bitty little slivers I took every bit of blue scrap I had and just covered six inches of this piece of cardstock with blue paper. Little bits, pieces everywhere. And just taped them down with either glue, double sided tape. I'm using up these little um, mounting squares that I've had forever. They still stick really good and they're fine, but I'm just, they're not my favorite thing to use anymore. And so I just used some of those up and used all the different um, blue shades that I got. Now, they're pretty much the exact same shade of blue because they're all from Echo Park. Um, either the 6x6 or the 12x12 paper pads. Um, so I did that. And then I got into my, I have a pattern paper, since all this was pattern paper, I have a pattern paper drawer of scraps. And I just pulled all the different shades of green. Um, I didn't want to go too dark, so I mostly stayed with like mint or a little bit of tealy, uh, this grass green, literally that's grass, um, like paper, <laughs> it's got grass on it, and, and then I did the same thing over here. So once I did that, I took this tealy blue green, so I thought I was being very cool and um, bringing both colors together, down the sides to um, cover up any... Um, little pieces that were not covered or just the ends and then I took one right down the middle at six inches and also put it there so this was the blue side this was the green side not in my big picture half in green half in blue this picture in green this picture in blue I did not mat this I did mat this in blue since I'm on the green side but then I matted it in black so it would stand out blend and go with this and have a little more black on the page not just this one and then I already had these blue stars that I had, um, was take, testing out a stencil that I created on my Cricut and testing out my, um, distress inks. And so, or I, um, just had this loose paper and I'd been using it for, 
uh, matting and tucking and things like that. So I got, I have four different sizes of Creative Memories circle punches and I just cut out however many stars there were. And then I decided that I would make the green ones so that I could do blue on the green side and green on the blue side. So I sprayed a, um, a, just a scratch peep, not a scratch peek, a scrap piece of white paper with um, all three of the shades of green that I have, um, which is mowed lawn, twisted citron, and peeled paint. This is like an army green, by the way. I'm I'm learning. <laughs> Slowly but surely, I'm learning. And um, so I sprayed those and let them dry. Kind of um, dried them a little bit with my heat tool. And then punched those out with that same thing. And then I also did a stencil pull with the extra ink because I do not like wasting. So these two and this one are from the stencil pull. And so I just laid it down after I'd sprayed the stencil and got it through the holes on these, I took that this out and then laid a blank piece of white scrap paper down and picked up the outside parts. So I'm not wasting all that ink. And I love the way they turned out. And so I just I popped up three of each color, maybe just two of the blue, and um, just gave it a little extra texture and dimension. And then I had these little word for these little phrases um, for, uh, from a Mickey Mouse cut apart that came from the Sandy Lion um, kit. Memories, a place full of characters, yes. Uh, family time and getting goofy and then I won't grow up. And I flipped them, although I did put this green one over here because it's more appropriate to be right here with my picture to say I won't grow up. Um, so, um, and then I just added a couple of little green embellishments to go along with it here and a couple of blue ones over here. And then this heart right here was green and blue. So I put it right in the middle on the bottom and, um, that is all I did on this page, but I, it took me a while just because I've been slow moving today. Um, this COVID has got like a roller coaster ride for me. And just when I thought I was starting to get better and start getting a little more energy, I was pretty lethargic and my brain was pretty foggy and I've been having a um, humming in my head all day. So, uh, or at least most of the morning while I was working on this. So I was kind of looking for a humdrum, not having to think about it thing to do. So when I got all of the scraps out, it was kind of like a, just, you know, lay it down and stuff. So I really love the way this page turned out. Um, so to match this page is this page. Now they don't match in the aspect of I created them the same way. They match in the aspect of it is all green and blue. I use some of the same um, stars and embellishments on here as I did over here. I pulled some of the Disney cut apart here and here um, and I matted with the same green and blue color. Um, this is the milk stand sign that has um, the blue milk, the green milk, and then they have this Bobo Wamba family farms. I don't even know what that is. We didn't have that. So we did have these two things. And then this is the milk stand itself. And you can see um, like the green and blue milk in these balls up here. And here's the sign, a smaller version of this sign. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that this, I wanted the family pictures to be on one page and this to be separated because there's like all these neat, um, bits and bobbles of droids hanging up. Like this is near where we were standing. Like this is, you know, like this corner over here. Um, there are all these little droid bits like the top of C-3PO or a C-3PO. Nope. I'm sorry. R2-D2. Jeez. This is what happens at night. I swear I do know my droids. I promise. Don't tell my husband. Um, so, and that's one thing in Galaxy's Edge is there's little bits and pieces of R2-D2s like all over in different places and you may not even realize it. So like in the background here, you can see a bunch of different droid bits and pieces. Um, and so I just wanted to bring this in. This I thought this was the perfect page, but... So that's how it kind of goes along with that. 
So this page, um, I had this little slip left of this Rockets and Sprockets zip zap. I have one little baby strip left from this page um, that didn't go because it has the rocket part on it and I didn't need that. Um, and then I do have this little bit with the um, heads on there too. And then um, I just added a bunch of different green and blue stars from a bunch of different um, uh, sticker sheets that I have because I have an entire box of all the stars in my collection for the most part that I have not used yet and I have used a lot um, and really that's it this paper which was a find is another one of the fancy pants papers that I got in a marketplace another 2007 from the about a boy by Michelle Coleman if you watched last night I used another paper for my docking bay 7 um, layout this was just in the very top when I opened it. I was like, okay, I'm going to look and see if I can find a paper that already has blue and green together. And this is the top page in my stash. So, yay, it was just waiting for me. And I love the fact that it's titled, this paper is called Chillin'. Because <laughs> that's what we were doing. We were chilling, drinking some cool milk. It was pretty neat. So, that this was a pretty easy layout, which is good. Because, like I said, my brain was not fully functioning this afternoon when I was working on these. So there is page number two. Now, you would think that a person could only scrapbook the Millennium Falcon so many times because it is only one thing, but it is a huge massive thing, except in this case. Now, this is, and if you've watched any of my previous ones, I did a huge pile of pages for Smuggler's Run. We were in line for 55 minutes. We took a ton of pictures. 55 minutes is no big deal. Totally worth it. I'd do that again in a heartbeat. Um, we took a ton of pictures in line. Lots of fun stuff happening. Lots of cool things to see. So while we're waiting in line for the Millennium Falcon the first time, my son, the 12-year-old, is standing there and just happens to notice that there is a miniature Millennium Falcon in these pipes. Now, if you are looking at a picture of the Millennium Falcon, this is probably this big, and the Millennium Falcon is full-size, massive, huge spaceship. So, just happened to find this itty-bitty little falcon that is in the middle of the pipes, and they, like, have to really point it out to me. So, um, I took a picture of it. It's already been scrapbooked but it was a little baby picture and I thought you know this is such a cool thing that who knows how many people have actually pointed this out and I've looked at a lot of spoiler tips and cool things um, and I've actually never seen anybody point this out now I'm not saying my 12 year old is the only person in the world who's ever noticed it I'm just saying <laughs> that I have not seen other commentary about it so I have to look into it so this layout this is a piece of craft paper that is just from the Colorbox cheap $5 pack that I like to buy. Um, black, white, and this khaki um, craft color um, in these books. And I took my Distress Ink by Ranger Vintage, Fo Vintage Photo and I took my little dauber. And I just distressed all the way around with the vintage photo. And then um, on the inside of where the vintage photo is, I distressed with some of the antique linen. Just a little because it doesn't, you know, on that craft paper, it doesn't make a huge impact like the um, vintage photo does. But it gives it a little blending to where it goes from this darker edge to a little lighter and then I put a nine by nine square of this Cricut um, Star Wars paper with um, Chewbacca on it. And because he is one of the ones who flies the Millennium Falcon, I never saw him in person while we were there, but he was going to be documented. So, um, and then um, this Millennium Falcon paper, I flipped part of it over, which is this galaxy paper, and then um, used this part so that it has some of the actual Falcon 
um, picture on it. This is also Cricut Star Wars paper. Matted it on a tannish colored cardstock. And then I also um, took the ink pad directly to the paper instead of using my blending brush and just took the ink pad straight to it and down the side so it would give it this little um, dingy look, which is actually exactly what like this pipe right here looks like, which was what we were going for. When I say we, I mean me. And then I made a little miniature Falcon um, shaker pocket. And on the inside of the shaker pocket, I glued a picture of Finn, Ray, and Chewbacca, as well as a miniature picture sticker of the Falcon. Um, and then I distressed this as well and then titled the page Mini Falcon, got the sticker out of one of my Sandy Lion um, Star Wars stickers sets. And that is it. I enjoy how this did take some time because of the distressing and building the shaker pocket. And if you've seen some of my earlier ones, I did make a bigger shaker pocket for my other Millennium Falcon layout. Uh, it was called Wowza. Um, it was the first time my husband and my family saw the Millennium Falcon when we first got there. It was bad. I mean, just super awesome. I was going to say bad word, but I won't. <laughs> so, anyway, so this is just my miniature version. And it has little Mickey heads in yellow, black, and white. And some different, um, just dollar store sequins. And um, I cut this out on my Cricut, cut the hole out, and then um, built it myself with some foam and the stuff on the inside, like I said, with the same distress inks that I used for the outside of this paper. And I titled it Mini Falcon because it is, I was going to name it Falcon on a Falcon, but I did not want to have to do all that, and I like Mini Falcon better. And last but not least for today, yes, I know, I've already scrapbooked the Millennium Falcon <laughs> multiple times, but it's just so cool. So, I've already scrapbooked this picture. It's actually the cover page of the Smuggler's Run. Um, it's with a picture, a group picture of my family um, when we were going on the ride, and then this picture in color. I just decided that I really love the effect of the black and white picture. So I cropped the people out, except for these little bitty heads down here, cropped the people out, did it in black and white, printed this one, which is actually a um, internet search picture because it, it just encompasses the entire Millennium Falcon from a, I'm not even sure you could get to a view as a, you know, non-staff person to take this picture because like this is where you enter to go to the ride. So this is like on the side where I'm at taking pictures and this is where you go in, like where I was headed in. So I don't know what's over here to where you, if you could even take a picture like that, but I just wanted this picture that would in, just show you the enormity. <laughs> that's not even a word, how big the Millennium Falcon is. Like it is life-sized, big mama jahama. So I used this, you are amazing. Um, to title this page. It is an American Crafts Thicker by B, and from the BU collection. Um, this, all the paper, this paper and the Chewbacca paper is from the Cricut Star Wars collection. And I tore it down to where all you had on here was, a, there's multiple um, Millennium Falcon like snapshots. So I wanted one of each except for this one that duplicated. I wanted one of each, so I tore around and then matted this one on like a dark, it's not black black, it's like a, a t light fainted black. Um, matted it on that so it would be a little bit more drastic. Matted this on white and then matted it on this glittery shiny black, but I kind of offset matted it so that it would have a bigger border here lined it with this um, washi tape because this washi tape is on the other side, I believe, of the matching page that this will be on. Um, added this little Chewbacca paper and then the Star Wars um, sticker came from um, one of my Sandalion stickers and it is matted on paper and then on foam so it is not touching 
this picture directly, even though this is just a stock picture from um, the internet, but I still prefer, if I can, to keep these non-acid-free stickers off of my pictures. So this was a pretty simple layout other than placement, trying to get things placed just right so it would look how I wanted it. I may go back and add, I've ordered some black shimmery, oh, it's a ranger spray I've never used before, so I'm going to see how it works on just like a regular piece of paper. Um, but if I like it, then I've got black, and I think I'm going to use that to do some splattering on here, but we'll see. But anyway, that is it. So I only made the four pages, but like I said, I have not been um, fully uh, functioning, <laughs> but I've used mixed media um, in a couple of different ways, and I've made a shaker pocket, I did some tearing, um, and some tons and tons of scraps that I got used up. So I'm super excited about that. And like I said, I'm getting super close to being done with my Disney adventure with my family. So uh, it will be an adventure to see what I choose to do next. So if you all have suggestions, I have uh, beach pictures from 10 years at the beach with my family. I have 2021 to get caught up on because we've had lots of adventures this year, even with COVID. Um, I do have some more um, young, Universal Young Box snack boxes with my family to do. I think Germany and Greece. Um, so, you know, I have lots and lots of things to scrapbook. It's just a matter of deciding what to do next. So, um, I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Tomorrow is Wednesday. I don't know. Um, oh, tomorrow is Wednesday. This it is the first day of the month. Oh my goodness. Can't even believe that I almost forgot. So, um, I said that I'd tell you where I was. So, here's where I am. In the end of the month, um, I have completed 125 Star Wars layouts plus three non-Star Wars layouts. So 128 is my total for August. I am at page 68 in my Star Wars book and page 300 in my Disney altogether. So that's a good place to end at the end of the month, right? So there you go. So 128 for the month of August. My goal for this month was 100 because it's the beginning of the school year and I knew it was going to be a little hard to get any more than that. So I don't know what September's goal is going to be yet. I'm going to have to think about that. So thank you all for going on this adventure with me. And I will see you tomorrow on September the 1st. And we'll see what the new month will bring. Happy scrapping. And I hope you get a chance to do something you love with someone you love.